My son James is an amazing kid, or at least he used to be. He was always so bright and adventurous, constantly letting his own curiosity guide him. I could hardly keep up with him as he always seemed to be looking for something new and exciting to do. Then something happened that changed my son. If we're being honest, I'm not entirely sure what caused it. It all started about a year after we had moved into our previous home. My wife and I were in an odd predicament, and we had to choose a new place to live rather abruptly. The house we decided upon happened to be an old farmhouse out in the sticks. I wasn't too keen on the idea of being so far removed from all the luxuries of city life, but my wife, on the other hand, couldn't have been happier. She had grown up in one of these houses, and the nostalgia swayed her. Before I could even protest, the house was settled on a few acres of land and even came with its own barn. I let out a comical laugh at the sight of it. I even jokingly asked if I should buy a pair of overalls and a straw hat. She just jabbed me in the shoulder, and we continued on to the house. Around the northern edge of the property, adjacent to the barn, was a small patch of woods. The southern edge of the property overlooked sprawling hills, and beyond that was the nearby town. I wasn't sure what James would think of his new home. He seemed somewhat upset about moving away from his friends, but he was eager to find and make new ones. Life was progressing normally for our small family. My wife and I both worked on different schedules to allow us to trade off watching our son. I had the weekends off from work, so during that time, that left me in charge. Luckily, James had just turned 10 years old, so he wasn't in desperate need of constant surveillance. There wasn't a whole lot of trouble he could get himself into way out here. He was also very well behaved, which I attribute all of that to my wife. One weekend, after living here for around 10 months, I was busy cleaning out the house. As I was making my rounds throughout the house, I passed by James's room. I noticed his door was ajar. As I approached, I gently pushed it open. I saw James standing at his bedroom window, staring out of it. I spoke to him, asking him what he was looking at, but he didn't respond. I walked over to him, laundry basket in hand, and gently touched him on the shoulder. When I did, it was like he suddenly snapped out of a trance. He turned to look at me, and I asked him if he was all right. With a smile, he told me he was fine, then proceeded to run out of the room, laughing and carrying on. At the time, I didn't think much of it. I thought perhaps he was just daydreaming or lost in thought. Hell, I'd done weirder things when I was a kid. However, as the weeks continued, James began staying in his room much more often. He was never the type of kid who enjoyed staying cooped up all day. He wanted to be running around and exploring. But during that time, I could hardly get him to come out of his room. Physically, he seemed to fine. It was just whenever I'd opened his door, I'd find him staring out of his window towards the barn. I had confronted him numerous times about it, but every time he'd respond with not having any idea what I was talking about. I had brought this up with my wife a few times, and she was almost as dismissive as James. She told me that I was just overthinking things and that, as long as he wasn't hurting himself, he was free to play how he wanted. If that involved staring out of the window, then that was fine with her. After a couple of months of this, I was sitting in the living room watching TV. I'd gotten up to use the bathroom, which was right next to James's room. On my walk back to the living room, I decided to take a peek inside to make sure he was fine. When I pushed open the door, I found the room empty. I called out his name, but there was no response. I walked over to the window and glanced out of it. I saw James outside. He was standing in the middle of the field between the house and the barn. Panic welled within me as I thought something was wrong. I sprinted through the house and out of the front door. I called out as I ran over to him. The closer I got, the more I began to notice just how still James was standing. It was like he was frozen in place. I walked up beside him and rested a hand on his shoulder. Almost instantly, he snapped out of it and turned to face me. I asked him what he was doing, and he just looked around for a few moments before telling me that he didn't know. He had no idea how he had gotten all the way out here. 
I told him it was fine if he played outside, but he had to let me know first. He apologized, and we both walked back inside. Though as we were walking back to the house, I got the strange feeling that something was staring at me. I glanced back over my shoulder and looked towards the barn, but there was nobody there. Nearly two and a half weeks after that, something else occurred. It was around 1.30 in the morning when I was stirred awake by a noise. In my groggy state, it was hard for me to discern the noise that had awoken me. But after a moment, my mind cleared, and I realized I should check on James. I got out of bed, and my wife tiredly asked what I was doing. I told her not to worry and just to go back to sleep. I walked down the hall and opened James's bedroom door. The room was once again empty. I quickly moved to his window and stared out of it. Though with how dark it was outside, I couldn't see him even if he was standing out there. I pulled on my shoes and coat, retrieved a flashlight, and opened the back door. When the door latched shut behind me, I realized that had been the sound that had woken me up. I turned on the flashlight and walked briskly across the field to the barn. Since moving in, we never utilized the barn. We inspected it when we first purchased the house, but it was just your run-of-the-mill empty barn. I never even used it to store anything. We just sort of kept it as a landmark. As I walked closer to it, I spotted movement just outside of it. I aimed my flashlight as best I could, and when I did, I saw James entering the large wooden door of the barn. Seeing this, I called out his name and began sprinting towards the structure. Just before I was able to reach him, however, the large wooden door slammed shut in my face. I called out to James once more and attempted to push the door open, but the door wouldn't budge an inch, despite pushing on it as hard as I could. I looked around, trying to find anything I could use to open the door with when suddenly, a loud and piercing scream echoed from inside the barn. Worry and panic swirled within me, and I charged at the door. When my shoulder connected, I fell inward and onto the wooden floor. I quickly stood up and shined the flashlight around. In the corner of the barn, I saw James standing there. I ran over to him and asked him what he was doing out here. He said that he didn't know and that he was scared. I hugged him and guided him back to the house. My wife was already making her way over to us after hearing all the commotion. I assured her everything was fine, but that did little to shake the concerned look from her face. Over the next couple of days, my wife and I had a long discussion about what had been going on, and we decided it would be best to demolish the barn entirely. I contacted a company, and they came out the following weekend to take the barn down. It was a surprisingly painless process overall, and once all was said and done, it felt like a weight had been lifted off of me. However, during this process, James seemed to become lethargic over the whole ordeal. He refused to leave his room again, was barely eating, and would hardly speak to us. Then, one evening, as I was getting ready for bed, I walked down the hallway. As I passed by James's room, I saw the door was cracked slightly, and I decided to make sure James was all right. I pushed the door open and found him once again standing at his window. Concerned, I walked over to him and asked him what he was looking at. He didn't answer at first, he just continued staring out of the window towards where the barn used to be. Then, after a few moments, he began to whisper. He said. You destroyed their home. Now, where will they go? I asked James, who? He raised an arm and pointed out of the window. I turned to look, and even though there was barely any light in the sky, I could see the reflection of what appeared to be dozens of eyes staring at me from the tree lean. After raising his arm and pointing, James collapsed to the ground. I called my wife, and we immediately took him to the doctor. They ran multiple tests on him but have been unable to find anything wrong with him. They just said he had suffered from a panic attack but were unsure of the cause. Shortly after that, we moved out of that old farmhouse and into a place much closer to the city. Since then, James has been slowly getting better, but whenever I ask him about the old house and the barn, he seems to have absolutely no memory of ever living there in the first place.